Thank you, everyone, for, for joining uh, our webinar today. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I guess we're exceptionally lucky and fortunate and, um, you know, pleased to have um, Evgeny Youssef um, join us here from, um, from Qualcomm. And he's also, a, uh, I guess, the, the foundation and chair, chair member of um, TinyML. Um, and today we're going to cover the TinyML Foundation. We're going to have a look at what TinyML is. Um, I'm going to provide some insight on how I look at um, TinyML working with SAP. Um, but, um, you know, for, for us here, we, we, we want it to be interactive. So if you have any questions, please, I'm watching the Q&A board. So please send it through. And, um, yeah, that's it basically for me. And I'm, I'll hand it over to, to yourself again. So thank you again. Well, thank you, Nicholas, for the introduction, and uh, also thank you for giving us this opportunity to share our vision of uh, TinyML, the state of the art of this technology and this field, and uh, also the amazing future perspectives that this field is going to bring to us, to all of us in the near future. Outline of my presentation is as follows. Um, I think I, I'd like to cover first what TinyML is, the fundamentals. Then we will talk about the opportunities uh, in terms of the markets and the value it's going to create. This will be followed by examples. And that's kind of the most interesting and exciting part because as you're going to see, Tiny Mail has so many examples in so many different fields, basically everywhere. And it has a really, very really bright future and the potential to change our lives in, in big time. So then Nick is going to make some comments on uh, SAP and TinyML and, and the opportunities and the technologies there. Uh, then I will take over and we'll talk a little bit about like what we do here in Qualcomm. At the end, we'll cover um, the, the TinyML Foundation uh, because as Nick mentioned, I'm one of the founders of the TinyML Foundation. It's a nonprofit organization, a global organization, but it's, it's headquartered um, in the US and California. And, and we built um, in the past, couple of years, we built a very strong global ecosystem and we'll talk about this at, at the end. So let's, let's roll. Uh, so what is our vision here and why we are so excited about it? So this uh, statement uh, was adopted at, uh, at the Tiny ML leadership team about a year and a change ago. Statement, the vision statement here is uh, we see a new world with trillions of uh, intelligent devices all enabled by tiny ML technologies that sense, analyze, and act together to create a healthier and more sustainable environment to, for all of us. So a couple of things to highlight here. One is uh, trillion of devices. This is not a science fiction. I mean, we're already talking about billions of devices deployed. I think very soon it will be in, 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 the, in the trillions. And then uh, the, the, the ultimate goal here is really to create a better world, better environment, healthier and more sustainable environment for all of us. And I'm going to give some examples of this. So that's, that's the vision where we're going. And this is, this is a very, very realistic and a very pragmatic vision there. So before we start, what is it? So we all live in the physical world, obviously, and we enjoy living there. And in the physical world, by definition, is, is analog world. And yet, and especially in the past year, due to the pandemic, I think we all um, got uh, trapped, in a way, in the digital world. So, um, and that's kind of where we are today. And we'll be probably living more and more, fortunately or unfortunately, in, in the digital world in the, in the years to come. And what... Um, what uh, um, uh, how, how these two worlds are connected so they're connected through devices uh, like transducer type of devices typically this device um, consisting of uh, a sensor that sends the environment uh, and then uh, some device to do analog to digital conversion and, and then a microcontroller and then uh, these devices uh, get um, a signal, analog signal from the from the physical world. It get converted converted into the uh, zeros and ones into the digits, and then uh, these uh, zeros and ones uh, they go to the cloud, and, and then they they get analyzed there. So that that's how AI uh, works today, pretty much, and it works fine, but it has a several fundamental challenges. Uh, one is it's uh, 
very energy inefficient because we're talking about transferring a lot of data from here to here and uh, and it consumes a lot of power second uh, this type of approach has privacy issues because like for example your picture or your data they can be intercepted uh, from the physical world on the there are some valid concerns about privacy and uh, these concerns are becoming bigger and bigger uh, for, for obvious reasons. There are also latent, latency issues because to transfer data from, from, the, from the physical world to the digital world to the cloud, it takes time. And then last but not least, if your connectivity, if your Wi-Fi is down, then there is no way you can connect the physical world to the, to the cloud world. So, so those, those are the fundamental issues. And that's uh, where tiny email comes to shine and uh, it solves these this issues. So, and what TinyML does, it, it really enables machine intelligence right at the boundary of the physical world and, 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 and the digital world. So that, that's kind of um, the, the fundamentals of, the, of this technology. And because it does all the intelligence right there at the boundary of the, of the two worlds, uh, it's uh, the most energy efficient way to digest information from the physical world into the digital world. Um, the data quite often, the analytics is done in such way that the data is not transferred like, like raw data, right? like images or audio. Uh, very often it's a metadata, it's basically like a signal that says, hey, um, I, have a, I have a dog on this picture. But it doesn't really send the picture of the dog. It just says, I see one dog, or I see two dogs, I see a ball, I see three, so whatever. It's very fast because again, all the intelligence happens right there. So, so all, all the data consumption happens right there in analytics. And because of this, we don't send data to the cloud, connectivity issues again. So fundamentally and ultimately, tiny ML is really the way to do analytics at, at, at the, in the real world, in real time, at extremely low power. That's the fundamental premise of tiny ML. How do we define TinyML? Uh, very, we've been debating this for quite a while when, when we started TinyML Foundation and activities there. And very broadly, we define it as a combination of machine learning architectures, techniques, software tools, approaches, hardware, capable of performing on-device analytics. As I said before, I think on-device analytics is a key. And it's very flexible in terms of doing a variety of different sensing modalities. It can be vision, can be audio, can be motion, can be chemical, can be temperature, you name it. But the key here that uh, this on-device analytics happens at extremely low power, typically at one milliwatt or below, which is, um, I would say, a factor of hundred or thousand uh, better than what you typically get for a cloud cloud-based type of applications. And because of this, you can see tiny email technology very often in, in battery operated devices. So that's a very broad definition. This slide is one of my favorite made a while ago, but I still use it quite, quite often because it really shows why we are so bullish about tiny email. Because if you think about data as a new oil or new electricity, as, as many people say, and uh, ML is a way to produce this type of data. So the, the tiny ML is really the, the ultimate way to produce as much data uh, and uh, to analyze as much data as possible. If you look at on the left here, um, uh, cloud ML includes only 1% of the data. Uh, HML type of devices, it's 4% of the data. But all the real time data in, in the physical world, 95% data is at the, at the tiny ML level. And they typically use uh, CNN micro type of approaches uh, and uh, hardware, it's micro controller with some uh, hardware acceleration. But you have all these different sensors, cameras, IMUs, infrared sensors, audio, environmental temperature, optical, and so on. All of this um, physical world data are getting um, into this uh, tiny ML domain and they're getting digested there. And that's how you collect you know, this information. So, so again, if you assume, and that's what it is, that data is the new oil, new electricity, new everything, then tiny ML is really the most ultimate way to get this data uh, in, 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 in huge volumes and in, in real time and extremely energy efficient. Again, that's why fundamentally we are so excited about this opportunity uh, and it, it's happening now. And just to illustrate it in a different way, 
uh, we see massive opportunities, like massive in, in, for tiny ML in all verticals around us, uh, where machine intelligence meets the, the physical world of, of billions and trillions of sensors. I mean, some examples are shown here, healthcare, automotive, industrial, IoT, security, lighting, XR, VR, appliances, drones, security cameras, uh, uh, robots, uh, audio devices, wearables. It's, it's everywhere. Like every of these verticals have very significant already tiny ML component, and it's going to be growing significantly over time. And talking about the time uh, um, access here, uh, when we started tiny ML Foundation a couple of years ago, we were kind of at the step zero, the step one, uh, building awareness. But what we see now already, we see initial tiny ML products on the product on, on the market. And our vision is in three, five years, we're going to see many what we call killer apps, uh, which will be like in, 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 in billions. And, and then in 10 years, it's probably quite pessimistic, or more likely it's going to going to see explosive growth and trillion of devices uh, we're using uh, tiny email. So that, that's, that, that's the grand vision. And I think we are marching towards this. I think we are at the beginning, but it's all, it's all very, very visible. And just to put some numbers to illustrate this, uh, this is from a recent uh, market report from ABI Research. And what it shows, a couple of things to highlight here. One is, uh, I think for the very first time in 2020, tiny ML was recognized by uh, marketing companies uh, as a separate market segment. So that, that's good. And then if you see the numbers, and these numbers also, in my view, are uh, a bit pessimistic, uh, you see a significant double digit, almost like triple digit growth in, in the next, next decade. And uh, another thing here to notice here, they're talking in the report, they're talking only about devices. So it doesn't include all the uh, software services. So I think if you think about the overall value that is going to be created by tiny email, you really need to multiply these numbers by a factor of 10, at least in terms of uh, dollar values, because this is just number of devices deployed. Yeah. And this uh, is kind I, of another way to look at this. I was going to yeah. say I agree, Go Evgeny, ahead. because because I was going to say I agree. I, uh, as someone who's working in the in industry now, dealing with some of our big customers who have challenges, as you rightfully had in the previous uh, uh, um, slides, you know, uh, anywhere from healthware, so embedded uh, watches to sensors. I think sensor equipment is kind of where we're seeing the most, right? You could take in. Uh, uh, let it be weather, let it be um, even for the agri um, environments, right? To identify yep. moisture and everything. It's, it's just, it's growing exponentially at this point in time. So definitely, I think this is, this is a, and you're right, I think this is almost pessimistic. I think that, I think it's, there's far more engagement than what, um, than what they've covered here. Yeah, it is. I like, for example, just to, to give you one, one data point here, I think in this report, they're saying that, uh, the number of devices shipped this year is going to be in 2021, 27 million. And what do we know already, like for example, if we just pick one company, Sintian, I think it's public domain for information, I think they already shipped 20 million, just one, one, one startup company is already kind of, and it's only the beginning of the year, it's not even like the whole year. So I think those numbers are probably quite pessimistic, but they just illustrate the point that it's a significant growth, with tons of opportunities. And if you're talking about the, the dollar was also kind of some verticals, logistics, smart cities, um, manufacturing infrastructure, average. So I, I think uh, uh, the belief from this report, market report, is that um, in the next uh, five years, we will be probably unleashing close to like 100 billion economic value. And that includes, again, software, services, everything. So it's, it's a huge, Great. it's probably also a little bit underestimated because it's a new industry and like for all new industries like smartphone or XR, it's hard to project how big it's yeah. going to be at, 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 at the beginning. Just kind of as a reference point, as you remember the iPhone one, the first iPhone was sold only with a volume of 1 million. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> so I, I, I agree. And look, you haven't even, and, and as I said before, where I'm seeing a, also a big adoption is agriculture, right? I mean, yeah. uh, all the food, all the things, all the farms that we're seeing, that's, that's also yeah, a lot of sensors already out there already. So, um, and uh, our, our previous chat prior to joining the call was, uh, you know, you had obviously the talk from the Raspberry Pi founder 
and his new embedded device, right? And and uh, yeah. they, they sold out within within weeks of releasing that that new product. So, and I know, so I'm I'm jumping on different Arduino pages, different pages, and trying to get actually equipment these days is actually quite hard because they keep selling out so quickly. So yeah. there's definitely a, an underestimate of what what's ha currently happening at the moment. Yeah, the interest is huge, definitely. Mm. And it's because I'll talk about this in a moment. That's because the technology is getting to the point where it's good enough, and it's mature, and it's quite easy to deploy. That's now it's really for people to use this technology to solve real real problems. Yeah, definitely. And with this library set as well, which is great. Yeah. Yeah, and and this is just kind of a typical thing showing like what happens in terms of value. Again, the hardware part is like single digits, but most of the value is going to be in the solution, services, software, and infrastructure. Will be kind of enormous value created there. Uh, why uh, we believe uh, fundamentally again, uh, TinyML is kind of getting to the point where it's ready to, to, to mass deployment. And there are several driving forces for this. One, we see more and more efficient hardware coming to the market. There are probably a dozen of companies working on uh, TinyML hardware, very efficient, easy to use type of hardware. On the algorithm and system side, we see more energy efficient algorithms and neural nets. That's that's kind of for sure because the cloud guys they didn't really care too much about efficiency. It was just about the, the accuracy, uh, getting accuracy numbers uh, high every year. But now it's all all about efficiency. So we see the whole software infrastructure is um, building on top of this. Both uh, startup companies and big companies. I mean, there were recently there were several announcements coming from. Amazon and Google, for example, with the uh, Amazon uh, monitoring devices and also Google perceived devices, uh, not Google, um, Microsoft perceived devices. So it's and a lot of uh, smaller companies who are quite successful in, in their um, so, so software tools. Uh, the ecosystem is really, and that's where I am very passionate about, we, we really see huge and very diverse ecosystems, like all kinds of players, small, big software, hardware, application people so it's it's really uh starting to boom and and then uh, we see on, on the business side we see more corporate and vc investments we saw several mnas uh in the past year i'm sure there will be more mnas coming this year so it's really kind of a very 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 good uh, time to be in this field and uh, when we talk about tiny email i think what is important to realize that uh, it distributes value through the whole stack on the on the hardware side it's the on the hardware side, it's uh, energy efficient hardware, uh, as I said earlier, algorithmic improvements and, and software tools. And I think I think uh, um, that's the key to, to, to develop a very good uh, tiny ML application. You really need to work across all these three domains because all the things are interconnected, hardware, algorithms, and software. It, it's really the key to co-design your system in a way that it's optimal in all the three, three domains. This is another area where I am very passionate about. It's uh, the social impact of TinyML. And I think the reason for this is also fundamental because tiny ML through sensors and transducers and its microcontrollers is ultimately and intimately connected to the physical world. So we really can, can get real-time data and influence things. And if you look at this uh, uh, 17 uh, UN uh, sustainability goals, development goals, tiny ML can, can make significant contributions in, uh, in more than half of these areas. And um, uh, at, at, the, at the upcoming summit, I'll talk about this at the end, we're going to kick off a separate uh, project initiative, uh, tiny ML for good. And, and uh, how do we connect these technologies to the to the these big um, uh, global goals uh, and, and, and problems to be solved. So it's really, as I said, it's a very exciting area to be, and I'm sure we're going to see a lot of good examples when the technology can give very back to, back to I was going to say, this is, this is great. We've also got SAP for good, so it'd be great to combine initiatives here, Evgeny, because, uh, yeah, we've got a lot of these... Um, these KPIs as well, because we've got things like Climate 21 as well, you know, yep. make sure that we're uh, the carbon, you know, and SAP is also just being public about how we're going to reach our carbon goals two years earlier than what we expected. 
So um, again, you know, working with big companies, let it be the, you know, there's there's a good one um, uh, around tuna, uh, which 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 we've completed, and actually a whole lot, you know, let it be with all the different manufacturers. There was one I published uh, the other day around Kua Coffee. Um, around sustainable coffee. So um, definitely, this is definitely, and again, agreed because you've got the sensors and everything to track to ensure that these, these companies are doing the right thing for good, right? So um, yeah. I think this, this, is, this is a great initiative and uh, definitely, um, you know, there's, there's, there's um, actually a few people I, I see who have joined the call as well, you know, around poaching animals. There's, uh, there's a whole yep. uh, number of initiatives which we're, which we're doing. Conservation, so. climate change, uh, wild fair protection, I'm sure. It's a yeah. very important area in your part of the world. How do you do early detection of wildfires? Exactly. Same as kind of here in California, especially last year, it was it was pretty awful. So, and I think that's kind of one of those areas where tiny mail could could help big time, both in terms of people's lives, but also in terms of economic impact. It's, yep. It's, it's it's significant. Yep. It's going to be massive there. Okay, let's move on now to the fun part. Uh, just. I want to illustrate in the next slides that what we are talking here is not just a science fiction. It's it's a, it's a real example. There are real devices, uh, real companies, and people solve real problems. Let's start with the use case of voice, always on voice. It's kind of a popular use case like keyword detection and so on. On this slide, you see uh, two examples, two companies. Uh, one of them is Sintian. That's the one I mentioned earlier. So they are already on their second generation of silicon. This is the first generation of silicon, what is shown here. This is quite tiny device, about like 1.5 by 2 millimeter. And uh, what is remarkable, what they do kind of under the hood, they have a neural net, a uh, few layers of the neural net that are baked and designed into the hardware. And by doing so, they can classify like 64 classes. Uh, and uh, they can do it at extremely low power, like uh, 140 microwatts. So it's really like like micro micro type of small small numbers. So it's it's super. Uh, and this company is already in production. As I said earlier, they ship like millions of devices, and it's 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 a really great example of um, of um, tiny email. Another company also from the Southern California. Uh, they, they develop a special uh, um, AI architecture that allows to do um, always, on digital, always on audio at extreme low power, like micro, micro amps of the battery, which is 100x lower than what you typically get using, using DSP type of technology. So it's, it's again, one of the very interesting use cases, and we already see this in, in production. And you can do very simple things, like again, if you're talking about this wildlife conservation, you can deploy this type of sensors in, a, in Amazon forest, and you can distinguish like animal sound from like gunshots, for example. You can do this very simple classification and you can you can make this type of things actionable. Again, tons of examples, uh, smart homes, uh, where you need to have voice commands and uh, glass breakage for, uh, for your home. You can distinguish like the sound of the broken glass and the, the, this type of things. Yeah. Tons of examples. Yeah, that was so the exact. Time. I was going to say that was the exact one you said before the uh, forest, right? The uh, I think I believe our team developed Rainforest Connect, right? So that's um, you know and identifying like bird sounds from actually chainsaws, right? So the ha to be able to do that, and I know um, we've also got yeah, uh, yeah, that, that too, yep. Yeah, 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 and and look, there's there's many great examples. So um, I know you're going through them now, but we'll, uh, one of the other ones that was another tiny ML presentation was the identification of um, lesions on the tongue, right? To uh, to to to, yep, to, yep. to to identify for cancer um, that was done by yeah. yeah for medical purposes which was which is also awesome right just using a small embedded camera to identify the the, the tumor on the tongue you know to identify whether it's bad or not so yeah actually uh, related to this and that's going to be actually exciting uh, today I saw an announcement on on, on LinkedIn of um, our friends uh, from Michigan they they started an initiative for K uh, twelve students and and teachers. So they basically provide internship programs and they're going to give them hardware to develop applications for wearable type of uh, applications. So you can do the, the um, muscular motion, some um, other type of uh, vitals and develop applications using tiny ML. So it's, it's going to be again, quite, quite That'd be great. Yeah, definitely. It's coming. 
So ne next example, I think that's that's quite remarkable in terms of the scale because as you know, Bosch is a big uh, global company and one of the leaders in the, in the sensor world. In fact, I think they're number one today. I mean, they kind of changed between Bosch and ST Micro. I think Bosch was the number one last year. And this slide I bought from Stefan, the CEO of, of this company. So the reason there is that uh, all these MEMS companies, sensor companies, they started, their software started just from the very basic functionality, just to be able to talk to the sensor. Then in, 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 the, in the second generation, they've been kind of talking about doing some application specific software to make it more functional. But what they see is coming now is the HAI and sensor dot. And I think what uh, Stefan specifically highlighted uh, in his presentation that uh, the software is becoming increasingly intelligent, enabling AI inside, inside the center itself. So that, that's basically the definition of tiny ML. So, so again, the significance here is that the sensor companies from, from the sensor world, they're thinking also kind of doing this functionality. I mean, like we in Qualcomm, we're doing it from the processor side and now the sensor people do it. So it's kind of all the things are becoming uniformly distributed there. And then he showed a couple of examples like what we discussed before. I think one of them is um, is the state of the diaper. <laughs> Nic Nicholas, you, you might you might appreciate this. <laughs> oh, too many times, yes, I know. Yeah, that would help. <laughs> <laughs> so this the, the diaper, as you know, is is, is an analog device by definition. It's probably as analog as it gets, right? So, but but what they're proposing there by including some sensors there, like temperature, pressure, humidity, you can get the state of the diaper, clean, dirty, weather, whatever. That's kind of, again, using tiny yeah. email for this. Actually, actually with uh, Bosch, another one. Another that, I was going to say, with Bosch locally, yeah. I spoke to the team, and they're looking at putting uh, an embedded sensor in cricket balls, right? So I know we've oh, yeah. got a few people in uh, who are fans of cricket, um, but, yeah, looking having the sensor so they can identify, you know, where you know how, how it's the best way to, to, to hit the cricket ball and, and for young kids to, to better their training. Um, so, uh, again, yeah, this was with Bosch because Bosch is also a big SAP customer and we've also got some collaboration work together. So definitely, a, 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 you know, they've got – you're right, they're the leaders in the – in in the in the sensor world, I think all the accelerometers in our iPhones and everything are done by Bosch. So yeah, 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 definitely. I think another example that he used, which I think also one of my is is one of my favorite examples, because it has a growing importance there uh, by deploying. Because due to the global climate change, I think we see more and more this kind of uh, giant fluctuations in the nature, like too many, too much rain, too too too, too much drought. I think. You experience this in your part of the world quite quite frequently too in the past few years, right? So I, I think in this particular case, it's how, how we can uh, use the sensors in the tiny email to monitor the climate models and risk evaluation, early fire detection. You can deploy these tiny sensors every, every whatever, and you can get this real time data, and you can make this data actionable. So it's a very, very important example. And I think this type of examples are going to be playing more significant role in the future as kind of we're getting into this unstable world of everything, right? So I think we really need to, to be data driven. And this is one, one, one example there. Um, another example here, I think you'll probably talk a little bit, Nicholas, from your side. This is from SensorMail company. Um, so what they develop, they develop, they, they develop auto email and uh, software tools uh, for tiny email. And uh, one of the use cases they do is for predictive maintenance. So I, I think the kind of the use model, the use case here, you have an engine or motor or something in your plant, in your factory. And by attaching you uh, with tiny email processor and software there, you can get a lot of things and you can see analytics here like if, if, if there are some abnormalities there you can you can really detect them earlier and you can make this type of things actionable either replace this device or do something there just to make sure you avoid um, productivity loss or revenue loss or even like um, maybe catastrophes there like like what you what do you want to avoid that's a very important use case for, of tiny ml in in industrial iot application uh, another example came from um, from ImageMob. This is a startup in Sweden. Again, you can see that tiny email is everywhere geographically. Uh, what they showed here, and this is the, the, the prototype just they showed at CES last year and this year, um, they can uh, train your model uh, using sound and ultrasound and uh, 
and you can train your models to get uh, gesture detection for, for sound control and, and, and other type of uh, things. And the key point that they, they made in their presentation that it's impossible to make this type of applications without, without tiny ML. So that's a very interesting. And they have the whole tool, um, software tools to be, to be able to do it. Just again, an interesting use case. Talking about more use cases um, that I've uh, talked to this, um, uh, to Mark and Joel recently last week, and they shared with me uh, their library of use cases. You, you can go to Cartesian.ai, that's a French company with, with the US. Again, you talk about a global, global tiny ML, we are moving to France now. So they work with their customers and um, uh, use cases and uh, they, they show all of these use cases on, on their website. You can see like uh, oil drilling machine, you see the electrical cars, you see uh, variants, you see uh, vacuum cleaners, uh, skateboards. I think one of my favorite is uh, uh, the glass tapping signals, like what we discussed, depending on how we do it, or the, 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 um, the breast cancer, the white wine smell, this kind of things. Again, tons of examples. And that's also what my experience in Qualcomm is because we do talk to a lot of customers. And when we share our technology to these customers, they come up with all kinds of very interesting cases which we from the technology world, world don't see very often because we kind of tend to be kind of more technology focused. But when you open it up and show it to the whole world and like, wow, you, you, you basically you can use this and deploy and use these technologies everywhere. So you can go to their website and explore all this. And you can click at this um, use cases and it shows what, what it does. It just, I thought it's a, it's a nice collection. What, what can be done with, with tiny email? Another big area uh, where tiny email is going to play a big role. And that's, um, I'm very positive about this. It's ASR. The reason for this is twofold. One is, uh, Typically, the devices are heavily constrained with the compute, how much compute you can do, because you cannot put a big, big battery on your, on your head, and there are thermal issues as well. So it really has to be very energy efficient. And at the same time, it also has to be a very small form factor. And that's, that's a perfect area for, for tiny email. And in fact, as uh, Jan LeCun said at the, at the um, couple of years ago, that AR glasses will be the killer app for, for, for tiny email. Uh, and, and you can see that in the tiny email talks, we have a presentation from Facebook from Hans, and it shows all more details there. But again, with so many sensors and so much compute required for, for XR, VR, and all the hardware limitations and battery limitations and form, form, form factor limitations, tiny email is a perfect place to, to solve many problems there. So I think we're going to see more examples. And I think. Uh, uh, we're going to have tiny email summit. I'll talk about this um, in a moment in two weeks, and it will be a keynote presentation from from Facebook uh, Reality Labs talking about this type of applications there as well. Okay, Nicholas, now it's your turn, I guess. Well, not my turn. Yeah, that's great. Thanks. No, and look, some great examples. I mean, there's, there's, uh, I mean, the examples that I'll probably cover is is uh, is something that you've already got in there, but. Um, We've already been had a look at this, and, and I was very excited when I saw the tiny email existence. In fact, I, I reached out directly to Evgeny and the team and say, look, how can we support this? How can I do some more? Um, and although Evgeny will probably cover uh, later on, you know, the different, uh, there's a whole lot of tiny email meetups around the world, by the way. So jump on the website and have a look. But um, yeah, I wanted to run the ANZ practice, and and definitely I'm growing the awareness of tiny email in um in, in SAP and, and uh, actually we've got a few projects which, we, which we're, we're currently covering and I'll cover one uh, in this session now. But um, if, if Genny, I'm assuming you still got control, so I'll, I'll let you click onto the next slide if possible. Um, let's see, yeah, uh, do you mind clicking? Yep, great. <clears throat> so for us, um, look, everyone knows, uh, or most people on here would know who SAP is. Um, and what we're seeing is, you know, a lot of big companies, let it be uh, mining and oil and gas, which I've kind of focused mostly on, but manufacturing and those kind of environments where we use a lot of heavy equipment and heavy uh, materials, there is a lot of um, machines going through. And what, what we're seeing and what we're being asked by our customers is to reduce the amount of, um, amount of maintenance, right? Because if you have a look, 
it's a $13.4 billion industry, right? And, 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 and you know, when I was actually out on a site, I, I was fortunate enough to go um, with one of our big customers. And, you know, they, they explained to us, they go, you, because we, there was a train which took the raw materials out to the shipping yards, right? And, and, and that train, if that train goes down, it costs them half a million dollars every half an hour that train is down, right? Uh, because of a maybe, a, you know, a, a bearing has gone wrong or something in the train has, has broken. And, and so what we want to try and do is minimize that impact, right? Um, because if the minute that train breaks down, that means the ships can't go. That means the whole port is blocked up. And that's why it's costing you half a million dollars every half an hour. So where I can see TinyML play a role here is, is actually having it um, in, you know, manage that maintenance and look after things. Um, so if you can go to the next slide, um, if Kenny, if that's okay. Um, what we want to do is, is, is use these tiny ML sensors, right, to identify uh, when certain things, when industrial equipment is, is playing up, right? Um, so let it be through sound, let it be through um, image, um, have the ability to identify these. So then we can possibly, you know, send out a notification or send out a, a request to, to, to repair and hopefully, you know, reduce the, the, the problem or reduce a, a possible uh, devastating issue. I mean, at start, I talked about money and, and devastation, but, you know, we're talking about big, big minefields, big assets. Uh, it's also the people's cost, right? Because if, if something happens to a person, then, you know, the whole site shuts down and then the cost becomes inevitable as well as loss of life, which is, which is something which all uh, big companies want to avoid. Uh, so next, next slide, if you any. Yep. So what, one of the areas I look at really tiny ML playing a role in, uh, it's an area which I, I, I started to get into early on, uh, but there's this concept called federated machine learning. And here's an example, and I've, I've taken this picture from a, from, a, from a diagram I've seen online, but the whole idea about having these edge devices, right, with, with the ML trained models there. Um, and, and what we're doing is we're actually using tiny ML in these, these little edge areas um, to be able to, to to be able to kind of identify, let it be using through sound or through vision to kind of push it out. Um, and then what we're doing is not only are these, are these models then deployed and listening, but then they're also capturing information. So hopefully what we're also doing is, is also gaining information from um, these, these distributed assets and then pushing it to a global aggregator. So we're pushing in the models and we're unifying them. And then once we have that unified data, then pushing the updated models back out to the assets as well. So we've got this continuous loop of where we're enhancing the ML um, using tiny ML at the edge to be able to push this out. So that's, that's currently a bit of a vision which, which we're trying to build at the moment. Um, and if you go to the next slide, um, we've actually developed um, this as a prototype, right? So um, we've already done the prototype. We've already developed the, the, um, the, the, the solution. We've already done the tests. We've had success. Uh, so the next thing now is to actually uh, push this out to a customer site. So we're working with Fraunhofer in Germany. Um, so we're looking at um, possible customers to deploy this to and Fraunhofer will work together with SAP uh, to kind of come up with the best kind of uh, federated edge uh, approach using TinyML moving forward as well. So a bit of a, an exciting area which we're helping push and, and pioneer, but um, definitely with the support of the TinyML group, you know, let it be with, with libraries, let it be with devices, um, you know, using all these kind of things will help us basically come up with a better solution to reduce the maintenance and downtime um, of our customers. Um, so, yep, ne next slide, Kenny. Yep. 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 And I guess yeah. it's, I'll hand that to you. Yep. Yeah, I think, uh, I think in the remaining, how much time we have? In the remaining, maybe 15 minutes or so, yep. I'm going to do two things. One, I'll uh, briefly walk you through the, the vision technology we developed in Qualcomm uh, using TinyML, and then we'll talk about kind of the global tiny email foundation and activities we're doing here. I think uh, this slide just show that vision is one of the important modalities that we humans use kind of to, to, to live and navigate and collect data and digest data. I think 80, 83% of our perception of the world comes through, through eyes. So I think vision is definitely a big part of this. Uh, vision is a very challenging task in terms of low power computer vision, machine vision. Uh, typically, it takes like uh, hundreds of milliwatts to do it because there are cameras that take a lot of power and the data processor transfer. What, what do we develop here in Qualcomm? And, you, and it's, a, it's a product now. You can see it here. 
It's a very tiny device. It's a camera and a processor. So we have a sensor and, and, and a processor with dedicated hardware and algorithms all right in there. Very small size, but the key here that this device can operate at less than one lot of power in cooling everything, the sensor processor algorithms. It's, it's really very disruptive technology. Small size, uh, this device does not take pictures and send them to your um, friend or whoever. So again, there is no way this data can be intercepted. It's privacy by design and it can work in different type of modalities. And obviously with this type of four factor, it's, it's, it's quite inexpensive. So it looks amazing. You can, yeah. well, I could almost see a bionic eye with that, right? So um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it's, 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 a, it's a very tiny, but it's a very mighty device. But it's again, it's typical of tiny ML. You can think about things tiny, but the amount of information and usability of these devices and the values these devices can provide is, is enormous. And it's, 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 it's a very, very disruptive uh, in many ways. Uh, and uh, this type of device can be used in so many different uh, verticals. That's kind of what we use it to in smartphone, watches, tablets, VR, smart homes, um, and uh, just as an intelligent data sensor, like what Nick said earlier. I mean, if you collect this, put this sensors in, in your factory, uh, you can do all kinds of things. How many people is on the floor? Do people comply with safety rules? Do they wear safety glasses? You can do all kinds of things with, with, with vision once you can do this type of an analytics. And this is just to show an example, real examples what this uh, device does. Uh, so you see a real image of a person we can run algorithms there doing full body detection, half body detection. Uh, you can do change detection, you can do face detection and multiple orientations. You can do gestures, you can train the models to be able to distinguish some logos. Uh, you can uh, use it in the retail environment to do like uh, shelf monitoring or customer monitoring there. And that's a product we've been keeping uh, for quite some time now in, 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 in volume. So, and again, that's, that's a real device that does real things. And it's, it's, a, it's a very interesting application of tiny ML in, in, in the vision space. Okay, now switching gears to the to the tiny ML community and the global ecosystem. As I said earlier, we started this a uh, little bit over a year ago. Uh, the foundation it's it's a it's a kind of a community, a nonprofit community of people. It's about two k people now on LinkedIn, and you can join there if you're interested. And as Nick mentioned earlier, we've been kind of the model we do it and, and the vision we have it. We have kind of all people in the world who are interested in, in these technologies, in different groups, they work together in, in this work and activate the development and deployment of this technology and by, by sharing data, by sharing knowledge, by helping each other and by doing uh, business projects together, collaborations in academia, all kinds of aspects of this. So there is one here that uh, Nick, Nick initiated it's probably going to be the southern, the most southern part of tiny ML, I guess. <laughs> true, true. Yep. Yeah. 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 Um, and there are more requests coming, I think, um, as we speak. And the growth on the left here, you see, that's like in 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 a little bit over a year, we we, we are close to five five thousand. Um, I think um, by the summit in 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 a week, it'll be close to five thousand people in twenty two countries. It's, it's really amazing to see this explosive, explosive growth. And uh, we formed the foundation, as I said earlier, a nonprofit organization with the mission to grow and um, uh, this, this ecosystem, global community, to promote uh, knowledge exchange between all the players there, to inspire on the capabilities of tiny ML and, and, and its potential to change the, the way that machine intelligence can work. And that's actually a big one because at the technology level, we know what it, it's capable of, but we want to make sure that people who need to solve real problems in the world know what this technology is capable of and what, it, what, what the potential and the power of this technology is. And then the, the last one is to connect the tiny ML technologies to um, technologies to businesses, to, to products and business opportunities there. And we've been quite successful in accomplishing this, this mission. Um, the way we do it, we do events throughout the year. We connect people, uh, and I'll, I'll show some events in, in a moment. Um, the, the one we are going to have 
in, in a week, and I, I encourage um, you to, to, to join it. It's going to be a uh, very, uh, very interesting event. It's our year, the summit. And unfortunately, it's going to be online, but the online format also allows more people in the world to be able to join, so that it has some benefits too. Uh, the, the website is very simple, tinyemail.org, and you can see all the information there. Kind of, um, in a nutshell, uh, the highlights um, as follows. So will be uh, the highest quality presentation, premier quality is going to be interactive. We'll have breakout sessions and so on. It's going to be live and it's going to be free thanks to the sponsors. So it's, it's going to be amazing five days, close to 70 presentations, four tutorials, panel discussions, research symposium, breaking news, awards, all kind of things, to get tiny AI for good, as I mentioned earlier. So it's going to be an amazing week. So if you're interested in getting up to speed um, on tiny ML and uh, along the latest and greatest, uh, that will be the place to, to be in a week. Just register, book your calendar, and, and, and join online. But if you miss it, I think all videos um, will be posted on YouTube, the Tiny Mail YouTube channel, so, so you'll yeah. be able to see it afterwards. But this is going to be, again, the event of the year, so don't, don't miss it out. Right. Uh, I've, um, I've put the link in the chat, uh, Evgeny, so everyone can click on that, make it easy for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So besides uh, the summit, I think uh, we do also two other major events. Uh, one is the Tiny ML Asia. We had one last year that was quite successful. And uh, we are starting Tiny ML uh, Europe, Middle East, and Asia. It will be in June, June 7 to June 10 this year. And then we do meetups. As I said, we do bi weekly webcasts. And we are going to see more and more initiatives coming, coming uh, this year. Hmm. And in terms of gross numbers, you can see, I mean, this, this chart speaks to itself. So uh, our first summit was in March 19. We, we, we had it on the Google campus here in, in the Bay Area in one big room, 160 people, kind of by invitation only. And now we see we are going to get to 3,000 people. I think we already have like 2,700 people registered as of today. So I think it will be probably close to three, 4,000 people um there and a lot of growth in this community both here and, and, and globally including including asia we started bicha billy billy in asia in china so it's it's really growing grow big time and this is just an example of what we did in, in, in asia last year it was 1800 people and it was like a great great participation most people from asia and from china uh, during, during this event to sum up, I think we are getting close to our time limit, 10 minutes left. I hope I just um, gave you a little bit of sort of like high level uh, overview from a spaceship, like where, where, where Tiny ML is and what kind of opportunities we are going to see in the, in the near future. And the take home message here is that uh, Tiny ML is machine learning at the very edge of the physical world at extremely low power. Uh, it's, um, it's going to create a significant uh, economic value in the next years. Um, and that's because of this um, fundamentally important function of TinyML as a data mining and analytics machine. And you see a lot of uh, use cases, just mind blowing number of use cases in, in all the verticals around us. And in terms of, uh, of the business opportunity, we're talking about the tens of hundreds of billions of devices uh, that will be shipped. I think that's kind of already happening. The significant value creation in the software and services. And um, I think the social impact is going to be quite significant too. I think we're going to see it there too. And it's, it's everywhere and, and, and it's happening now. So this is the end of my story. Hopefully again, I gave you a little bit of an idea what this field is and why we are so excited and, and passionate about it and that, uh, how much potential it has for, for all of us. Great. Thank you, Nicholas, again. No, thank you, Evgeny. So we're getting a few questions. Come, I was just gonna say, we've got a few questions coming through. So I've just answered 
that one. Uh, I was just going to say, uh, obviously, we, I talked about SAP now. Anything that uh, we're doing with our um, our team here in, in in Asia, we're going to make it open source. So all the information, the 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 libraries and stuff, we'll make to extend and integrate into SAP will be open source, right? Because um, for me, uh, you know, this is an open source project, um, and you know, to to def definitely um, support the. Um, the growth of this 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 great initiative. Well, I want to make it open source, so you can, if you've got a cool uh, tiny ML concept or idea you want to share, um, we'll hopefully provide some libraries for you uh, in, in GitHub, um, and then that will allow you to, to integrate into, I guess, you know, different SAP systems. So, um, just a bit of a, a bit of a, a view from there. And and again, as Evgeny said, you know, there's there's a huge community out there. Um, if you're interested, if you're a base in ANZ and interested in, in participating, please, you know, feel free to contact us. Um, I'd be happy to, to work with you, see, see how, what we could do to, to present the materials. But there's heaps of great presentations. As I said, I've, I've watched so many good presentations from the Tiny ML group. Uh, let it be, um, you know, it said from identifying cancer on tongues to, uh, you know, the new Raspberry, supporting the new Raspberry Pi. Um, so, yeah. Just curious, is this based around TensorFlow Lite or something new? In my opinion, I think there's some TensorFlow Lite stuff. Evgeny, uh, I mean, TensorFlow Lite plays a part of this. Uh, well, TensorFlow Lite is one of the uh, yeah. frameworks. Yeah. In fact, they kind of in, internally in Google, they use it TensorFlow Micro, kind of uh, yeah. to distinguish, <laughs> okay. to distinguish it from Lite. But as I said earlier, there are uh, many players that develop their own libraries, their own tools both big players and small players. I think uh, definitely the Amazon and, and, the, and the Microsoft are already on top of this. I think uh, obviously Google has some activities there and we see a lot of startups that are coming really with cool, easy to use products like HM Pulse and, and, and other companies. There's probably like a dozen of startups. Uh, I mentioned SenseML and, and other companies doing this uh, very easy to use tools to solve problems. And I think we see like significant deployment like Cartesian, these companies, they get a very good traction in the industrial world because people want to use this technology to solve real world problems. And that's what this software tools allow to do. And again, TensorFlow, Lite or Micro, it's like one of the ways to do it. And I think if you go to TensorFlow Micro, there are also some open source type of projects. I think like Pete Warden is going to talk at the summit, like how to train IMUs to do the magic work type of um, use case. So uh, how do you do vision? So there are already some, some open source examples and and codes you, you, can, you can get today from, from, the, from these big companies. Yeah, yeah, thanks for clar clarifying that. Any more questions from the from the ground and field? No, I mean, I've, I've as I said, there's um, I think this is a great initiative. Um, it's great to see what Qualcomm's doing in this area as well. I think uh, I think you know the 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 examples that you gave, especially around retail um, stock tracking and stuff like that, is going to be key for for me. Actually, I've I've, had, I've got a bit of an idea on what we can do there. Um, but yeah, that's. Uh, also, I'll keep that to myself because I think it's a great idea. Um, but yeah, I think I think there's a lot of different areas, and 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 that's what we see, right? We'll, the more business solutions, the more business examples, and again, if you need support with these, please let us know. Um, there's different things even within SAP. You know, we've got this SAP Startup IO. So if you need funding, we can get you funding. Um, there's different, you know, there's different kind of boot camps uh, which are available. So if you've got an idea you'd like to explore please, you know, feel free to reach out. I'm sure there's plenty of people in the tiny ML community as well as within the SAP community who can, who you can speak to, to hopefully, you know, help with funding or help with uh, resources to get this going. Thanks once again, if you any, really appreciate your time and input on this as, and again, for being, you know, one of the thought leaders to start this project. And again, you know, when I saw it, I was really excited because I was thinking of all the potentials that it be, you know, SAP for good or, um, you know, the, the using it in agriculture or using it in manufacturing, where I see probably the most potential uh, to, to, to enhance um, our intelligent enterprise. So um, thank you once again for your time. Uh, thanks for joining. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and don't forget to register for the summit. I think it's really good. Register for the summit. Event. Definitely. Yeah, tinyemail.org. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Bye. Bye.